Hey guys, great to have you here. This is Jordan Wayne's with King's Worship. Listen, I want to thank you for opting into my channel today. And um, today I got something really special for you, something a little different we're going to be doing. Um, I want to talk about a simple technique that I use in praise and worship that I use in uh, my playing that can really help enhance, give a little flavor, a little spice to your playing. Okay. So we're going to talk about, again, the 1-4 one four, the one four progression. I'm going to keep it very simple because I know some of you guys are beginners and, and I want to give you something foundational which will, which will really help you. So we go to the keyboard here. If we're in the key of C again, for music theory, for um, this is fundamental, especially if you're in a fundamental level right now, you might be a little more past this, but this still might be able to help you. So in C, we have the one, which is C, and we just count up the scale, and we have the four, which is F. So in this progression, I'm going to be using the C chord major, which is C, E, and G, right? And I'm going to be using the F chord major, which is F, A, and C. Now, I'm reminded of a song that's pretty popular. It's by a group, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, the Beatles. And it's called Imagine. And in the beginning of the song, they use this progression. And I'm going to give you this. It goes... I'm sorry, go like this. And this is without any variations, very simple. Some of you probably know this song. Imagine all the people, even if you try. Right, you guys know the song. Now, if you notice, I use that very simple. I had C, and I use that F, and I did a little off the third, chromatic. Now, just imagine if you were playing these two chords in a service, and a lot of us, we have our chord books, and we're looking, we're like, okay, you know, what's the chord? I'm playing the C. And you're very glued to the book. And you're playing that F, and you really might not know what to do with that. You just know what you're looking at, what you're reading. Now I'm going to show you with these two chords, you can add a lot to it. Here's one technique that I use. I call this the country twang. And that a lot of country music and a lot of CCM contemporary music uses this. And it goes something like this. On the C. Now if you notice, I didn't... I kept the chord, bum, bum, bam, bam. you heard that little twang. Now what that is, is, as you know, I'm playing a one, the three, the five, right? And I'm doing a little roll off of this. Doing, it's very quick to the C, D. It's actually, uh, I'm sorry, D, C, D, E, D. So it's D, E, D, C, it's very quick. But I, I'm playing in time though. And I might even hit that, instead of hitting it by itself, I might hit that G with it. So. And it's also in the rhythm, so it's one, two, So we're counting 16, so we can go 1 D and the 2 E and the 3 E and the 4 E and 1 D and the 2 E and the 3 E and the 4 E and the 1 E and the 2 E and the 3 E and the 4 E and the 1 E and the 2 E and the 3 E and the 4 E and the 1 E and the 2 E and the 3 E and the 4 E and the So you can stand there, so the rhythm is kind of off of the one, so it's one the end, brilliant one the end, and that one little technique is very simple, but it can really help you. So instead of you just, you know, um, play those blocks, you can get monotonous. So every now and then you just throw that little twang in there. Just be 
people they'll turn their heads like, oh, who's that? Now, here's one more technique I'm going to give you guys before I go. Um, this technique is what I use. You can use it in combination with the one technique I just showed you. And this will show you how you really can help color the music a little more, especially with your left hand. Now, a lot of us, um, when we begin to play piano, we play those blocks, right? Playing that C chord. And we're playing the C in the bass, right? And then we're playing the F or the F chord in the bass. And then sometimes, um, you know, once you learn how to follow this bass, you use your thumb and your pinky to play the octaves. Right? So you're playing that C. Right? Playing that C. Now, now what if I did the, uh, the... Now, if you notice when I did that, what I did is I added a second... So I got the one, three, and the five, but add the second before that, right? And if we know we count the scale, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This nine is the same thing as this second. The reason why it's a nine now because it's after, because we're counting up the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So when we do this twang, I'm considering that as a second. Now when I bring it up above the chord, it's the same note, just in different positions. Now I'm considering a ninth. So now I have a C9 chord, right? And you can do the same thing with the F. I have that one, three, five, and I have that second there, right? That G. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? It's the same note, just up. So now I have this F9, right? So now I'm going to show you this. If I do this in the left hand, if I'm on the C chord, right? And we're hitting that block chord. What if I took this second and put it on the top? And normally I add a fifth there to give a little more color. Now you'll notice the difference. Watch the color. Again, a color. And I did the same thing with this F. Remember we had the F, I was the one, three, five, and the second. Now we take this G and we put it on the top. So we have the one, three, five again. We put the G on the top, so now we have, I'm playing the 1, the 5, right, which is C, and I'm playing the G. So now watch, instead of me playing octaves, I have a very kind of neutral, flat sound. Now if I play this ninth, you hear that? kind of gives a little more, kind of gives a little more color. It's almost like it gives a little more ground into it. It's like a power chord. Six. It's almost like you're getting a power chord just in your left hand instead of. See, it's very. Now I have. Woo, you see that color? It's like, woo, it's like, woo. It, just, it just adds so much body to your, your, your chords. So now you could be playing. Hit that twang. And for you guys that. I wasn't blessed with, you know, large hands. I have some friends who have been really blessed, and they can play like a C here, and they can play all the way up to an F or a G. They just have wide hands and big hands. I don't have big hands. I have small hands, but um, I was able to practice and learn some discipline. So what I did, what I would, sometimes what, when I first started doing, I would have to stretch my fingers like that. I would have to roll and arpeggiate. So if you can't really stretch like that, you can go ahead and you can roll it so you get to see the F. And then you hit the pedal. So the pedal, see I'm hitting the pedal, will hold. And it'll hold all that together for you. So it's okay if you don't stretch, if you can't reach. But go ahead, as you continue to do it, you know, you can move your hand a little. You know, you try to stretch as much you, best as you can. So just remember, your fingers and your hands are muscles too. So after a certain amount of time, you'll be able to get a wider stretch. You'll be able to reach that, okay? So, you know, just keep practicing, and in the meantime, until you really develop that dexterity and your hands being able to stretch and that independence in each finger and your muscles, then you can just go ahead and just reach and use that pedal. Okay? Now, 
I'm gonna show you one more thing. And now, not only can you play a ninth, right? This is also a trick that I like to do to give it even a little more color. You're probably saying, how can you get more color than that? But you can, just a little bit, in the left hand. So I'm gonna show you. So not only can you do the one, the five, and you have the, the, the eight or the nine, that way as we just did, right? We had the nine, right? Now what if I did the one, five, the nine, and the ten? That is for you guys that can stretch a little better. So you go like this. Now you hear that? It's a little dissonance there. It might sound weird to the ear at first, but without playing in succession, you're gonna see that it's gonna really give it a, a very nice, you know, very jazzy, maybe very colorful sound. So this is for you guys I wanna get maybe a little more complicated. So you hear that? And I can do the same thing in the F. Again, we have the five, right? One, the five. And we have the nine, right? We have the ten. So the ten is the same thing as our third. Just as a nine is the same thing as our second. We have the third. And our, and our chord is the same thing as the, the, the ten here. So I have the nine and the ten I'm playing. So if you look, I'm playing a one, five. You hear that? It's very nice. So this in it was a rich chord. So now when I'm playing these very these two chords, now I'm gonna play the, the nine and the ten in my left. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep very block and then I'm gonna add a little twang that we did. Here we go. So this is great. Just a quick review for you guys. When you're in worship and you're, you know, you might be just playing behind a preacher right now. He's giving a word of encouragement. You might be sitting there like... Time it might even be slowed down, which is fine. You know, you're playing Romano at that time with no drums or anything. But go ahead, you can add that little twin. Right? So you're still supporting that preacher. But now you get a little more color, right? Very dynamic. All right. And there's some other things I did there, like inversion octaves, and we'll cover that in another video. But I just want to give you guys our review again. With those, you can use it for any major chord with those one, three, five. Go ahead and, and put that little nine, that little second in there every now and then, and, and even in your left, you know. Not only do you, you don't have to just play octave, you can play a uh, put that fifth in there, you know, and arpeggiate it. And put that nine in there at times. You want to give it some color. All right, so guys, I hope that helped you guys uh, to spice up your playing a little bit. And um, let me know your comments. Go ahead and comment below in my comment section and uh, give me your feedback. Let me know if something you didn't understand, any questions, any concerns. You know, I, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what, what you have to say regarding this video because um, I do want to help you guys. Um, become more efficient in your playing, especially, you know, when it comes to worship music. And you can understand, not only understand what you're doing, but you can take it to the next level and be more efficient in your worship. So guys, I thank you. This is Jordan Williams again from King's Worship. Um, I want to appreciate you guys and um, God bless you. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.